Hi everybody, I went on a little hunt the other day, visiting local antique shops. I wanted to find unusual and unique pieces and turn them into jewelry. I was lucky to have found several original and interesting spoons. Let's make something with them. So now you might be wondering what is the next step to turn these spoons into rings and honestly it's actually more simple than you might think. What you need to do is cut this part over here and then use a ring bending tool to shape them and because they already have such a nice patina and tarnish on them I'm going to try and see how I want to finish them. I probably won't completely polish them but I'll try try to keep some of the patina and just bring the shine back out. When you look at the backs of these spoons, you can actually see that these ones, you can see where they were soldered and attached. And I'm wondering if this will actually withstand bending. But with these ones, you can see it's one piece of metal. It looks really good. And I'm honestly not worried at all that it might break anywhere. So. <laughs> We'll see how they're going to work. I'm very curious. I'm going to use a jeweler saw to cut the spoon right over here. It might be a little bit too long, but that's okay because I'm planning to overlap it. This one, I can't decide whether I want to make it a ring or maybe I should make it a pendant. And I think I like the pendant more just because then it can be placed like this. Whereas as a ring, it would have to be placed on a side. So I would probably have to cut right underneath the circle and then make a little hole in here so I could place a champ ring in there. By the way, for cutting this, I'm using 5 odd saw blade, which probably is not the best choice. Maybe try to go for like 2 odd, <laughs> will be faster and easier. <laughs> edges are pretty sharp now so I'm going to file them down and sun them and just make them nice and smooth. I'm using these files for now. This one's very coarse. This one's medium. I think that's cut too. And this one's finer. So I will leave this one for last. <laughs> spoons and create rings, I will be using ring bending tool by Pepe Tools. I hope that it will be enough for me to bend it and strong enough for me to bend it <laughs> because I don't really want to anneal them. But let me show you if that works. Okay, we will see if I can actually get away with bending these as they are without annealing them. So I'm going to go for the size 7 first because I'm not sure which one I want to go for and 7 seems like a good choice to start with. I can always make it a bit bigger or a bit smaller because they will be open so they won't be soldered or anything like that. So I can experiment with the sizes and pick the one that fits the best. I'm actually just a little bit scared that this part may break off, <laughs> but I guess I won't find out until I try. So let's go for it. <laughs> I'll start from this side. Or no, should I start from the... Let's just start from this side. Let's see. Okay, it actually bends quite well so far. Not a lot of force required. 
We're getting to the tricky part. Is it gonna break? Oh, okay, it didn't break. <laughs> Success! Now I'm being very careful where and how I bend. As you can see, I try to make sure that it's even everywhere. Okay, this one is much harder to bend. I might need to anneal this one. Okay, let's see if that helps and if it's going to be easier now to bend. Well, much easier, you guys. <laughs> so make sure you anneal it <laughs> before you start working on it. It's just so much easier. This should be going right this direction now. You can also use your mandrel and rawhide mallet to make sure that the fit is perfect and that every little bit of the ring is curved properly. And also you can work on the size this way as well if you want to adjust it. Okay, unfortunately with this one it didn't work, it broke. But this is actually the one I suspected might break because this part over here it just didn't look very secure. And and since I didn't anneal it because I wanted to keep the original natural patina that was already on here, I think because of this it broke. So when you do that, either make sure that you anneal it and you can always apply patina later on or just be very, very careful. Here I'm using my rotary tool to polish some of the pieces. I also drilled a hole in the pendant and I'm polishing it, removing old patina and tarnish. Now I want to finish these by polishing them with for example steel wool or you could use these polishing pads which are also great for removing patina. And this is how the finished rings and a pendant turned out. I tried different finishes on them and I'm very happy with the result. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much Pepe Tools for sponsoring this episode. You can find the ring bending tool by Pepe Tools in the description box under the video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!